the rights afforded by copyright law. The Copyright Act provides that, subject to certain exceptions, the owner of a copyright has the exclusive rights to do and to authorize any of the following. So, copyright holders have certain privileges by the Copyright Act. Let us see what are they. To produce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records. So, what is reproduction here? If a author releases and publishes the book of 100 copies in the market, they are sold out. So, he has every right to increase the copies and publish them one more time and he can distribute them. To prepare derivative works based on the copyrighted work. So, we are going to discuss about derivative works a bit later and uh, so that we will move on to the next step. The distribute copies of phono records of the copyrighted work to public. To perform the copyrighted work publicly, to display the copyrighted work publicly, to perform copyrighted work publicly by means of a digital audio transmission. So, once you create a content, a copyrighted work, so you have every right to share your content or the book or whatever the creation you created. You have every right to share it with the public by any means of medium. Unless, unless the exemption exists, unauthorized exercise of any of these rights by another is an infringement. That means a person who doesn't have any relation with the copyrighted content performing above mentioned activities, then it is called as violation of it. For example, if a person taking photocopies of a textbook, that means Xeroxes of the textbook and distributing or selling them at half price, or else a person who is going to make piracy CDs of movies and selling them for very low price or the high price. All these are considered as the violation of Copyright Act. Rights of Reproduction the most fundamental of the rights granted to copyright owners is the right to reproduce the work. A violation of the Copyright Act occurs whether or not the violator profits by the reproduction. So, every copyright holder basically have the rights to reproduce their works whenever they have. They have the requirement to reproduce them. For example, if the copies are sold out, so he has every right to reproduce them. If he wanted to add something to it, then he has to reproduce the book and editions, new editions of it. So every time whenever he feels like there's a need of reproduction, he has every right to do that. And if a person claims that he purchases a book and takes Xerox copies and distributing among the students. Even if it is he is doing it for a non-profit basis, he is still considered as the violation of Copyright Act and will be prosecuted. Only the owner has the right to reproduce the work. We already discussed it. Secretly taping a concert, taking pictures at a performance or recording all violate the owner's right to reproduce. So, if you go to a movie theater and if you start start taping the movie, then it's a violation of copyright. If you go to a concert and if you are recording it with your mobile phone or any other, then it is considered as violation of the copyright. So, please never ever do such things. The session of Congress in 1978, a group of authors, publishers, and users established a non-for-profit entity called as Copyright Clearance Center. So, in 1978, with the session of Congress, they established an organization kind which is based on non-profit. So, let us see what are the activities of Copyright Clearance Center. Copyright Clearance Center grants licenses to 
academic, government and corporate users to copy and distribute the works. Okay, what it means is there are certain books or the content which is copyrighted is going to be very useful for the students and the government which is not available for all the students. So what this Copyright Clearance Center is going to do? They are going to give the access to this particular academic needs and the government and corporate users so that they can benefit out of it. In return, they are going to collect some royalty fees which will be distributed to the content creators that they have shared among the academic and government and corporate users earlier. Companies that photocopy articles from journals and magazines often enter into licensing arrangements with the copyright clearance centers so that they can make copies. So if any of the company which is using uh, any journals from these certain magazines will come into licensing arrangements with copyright clearance center so that they can use the copies of the journals. Now let us understand the derivative works. What are the rights to prepare derivative works? Let us, what is the definition? Let us look into it. A derivative work is broadly defined as a work based upon one or more pre-existing works such as a translation, dramatization, fictionalized motion pictures, version, abridgment, condensation or any other form in which a work may be recast, transformed or adapted. So basically what it speaks is if there is a pre-existing work that means if a person launches a textbook on a certain subject and there is a author who would like to add something to it based on the other's copyrighted work. He cannot directly write extension of it. He need to take the consent of the copyrighted owner then only he can do something on it. For example, if a person makes a movie and there is a director who would like to make a sequel for the pre-existing movie. He need to take the copyright permission from the original movie makers then only it will be happening. And one more example is in India there are many Hollywood movies are going to be get released every year. But not all the people in India will understand the basic English language. So they will be dubbed into different Indian languages. While they are dubbing it, they cannot directly dub it without taking the copyrighted consent from the original content owners. So whatever you wanted to do with the original content, you need to take the permission from the copyright owners. Then only you can do that. That can be a translation or a remake. A work consisting of editorial revisions, annotations, elaborations or other modifications is also derivative work. Yes. If you would like to add anything for the copyrighted work, then it is comes under derivative work itself. Section 106 of the Copyright Act provides that the owner of a copyright has the exclusive right to prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work. So, the copyright owner has every right to whether to reproduce them in the number of copies or else he would like to do some extensions or adding some kind of content to the original one. All these rights will be owned by the copyright owner itself. This is right. Uh, this is often referred to as the right to adapt the original work.